streetcar system which spanned both Minneapolis and St. Paul, reached out to the St. Croix River and Stillwater and Bayport and all the way out to Lake Minnetonka, was all operated by Twin City Rapid Transit. And uh, at its peak in 1930, there were 523 miles of track. Now, a simple way to think of it in St. Paul is that if you look and see where there's a Metro Transit bus route, there's a pretty good chance uh, that that was a streetcar line. And about the only exceptions to that are out East 3rd Street and Battle Creek neighborhood and uh, the newer sections of Highland Park. Otherwise, Grand Avenue, Randolph, University Avenue, Rice Street, Jackson, uh, East Maryland were all streetcar lines. Well, the streetcars were yellow. They were about 50 feet long. Uh, they were the largest vehicle on the street by far. Uh, Twin City Rapid Transit was unique among American transit systems in building all of their own streetcars. They started that in 1898 and they kept it up through 1927. Um, unlike any other city, uh, they didn't buy a steel streetcar until after World War II, so everybody remembers these big wood cars. Many cities had kept their streetcar systems and were glad that they did. Um, other cities like St. Paul are now looking at how to restore it, and that's really what this study is all about. We started out in, in what we called phase one, um, looking at most of the major arterial corridors throughout the city, looking at if there were some basic characteristics of whether it would work, if we had sufficient numbers of people and jobs in those corridors, if there were any fatal flaws that would prevent the, the implementation of streetcar service. For example, um, bridges that were too low or grades that were too steep. We did that and we concluded that most of the corridors would work for streetcar service. So then we moved on to phase two and phase two was looking at um, of those corridors, how could we put together logical lines in those corridors? Um, so we came up with about 15 lines in the city, um, looking at how those would work, looking at a number of different evaluation criteria. We're focusing mostly on are there, are there sufficient numbers of people who would ride the service? And then finally in phase three, what we'll do is look at those corridors in a lot more detail, especially with a focus on cost, ridership, and economic development, and figure out what should be the first, the first streetcar line to be redeveloped in St. Paul. A lot of cities around the country and around the world right now that are looking at streetcars again as a kind of a positive trend in urban transportation. Uh, they're bringing a lot of life back to cities and city streets. Uh, they are good for circulation within the city and also economic development. Private investment tends to follow streetcar lines. And so it's an exciting opportunity to move people around your city and also get a lot of new investment um, in the urban core. As people start to look, look at moving back into cities and are looking for different ways to get around, as millennials are looking for places that they want to be able to live that are kind of um, interesting and where they can get around without a car, um, a lot of cities are looking at this as a sort of regional competitiveness issue. I think people often wonder why is a streetcar any different from a bus? And buses are great, they continue to be kind of the, the, the main component of our transit system in, in the in St. Paul and in the Twin Cities region. Uh, Streetcars offer uh, something that's a little bit higher quality ride, um, a little bit more um, interesting to people. For some reason, people like trains. They like the permanence of it. They know where it's going to go. You can see the tracks. One of the things we hear from people about buses is, I'm never quite sure where the bus is going to end up. And then also on the pr sort of development side and the investment side, uh, bus routes are things that can be changed over time. Once you lay down tracks, you've gotten some certainty in terms of where that investment is going to happen and, and some permanence there. And so streetcars offer an ability, not unlike light rail, to see a lot of new investment in your city. Um, but streetcars are a little bit more nimble than light rail. They can fit on narrower streets. They can share a lane with cars. They don't have to have exclusive right-of-way. So they're, in some ways, a better fit for more of our urban streets.